lipids it's also part of biological molecules um, so let's get started so lipids are basically compounds of carbon hydrogen and oxygen okay and the unique thing is that they have a lower proportion of oxygen okay so as you can see we have uh, stearine as an example and here's the molecular formula for stearine okay as you can see um, we have quite significant number of carbons and hydrogens but when you see the number of oxygens in comparison to these two um, it's very it's very less okay. so that's how we identify lipids okay. um, now let's go on to the classification of lipids okay the different types so first off we have simple lipids or they are also called triglycerides okay. mm -hmm. We have phospholipids, okay. we have glycolipids, uh, we have cholesterols and sterols. We also have steroids and terpenes okay. and we have waxes. Okay. Now lipids can also be described as organic molecules which are insoluble in water. Uh, the most familiar lipids okay, are fats and oils okay and fats are solids at room temperature where oils are liquids at room temperature now there's a there's a reason behind that and we just study this okay um, so let's first study two types of fatty acid chains okay the first type is saturated fatty acid chain okay. now in a saturated fatty acid chain we have all single bonds with carbons okay so a carbon is uh, like sp3 hybridized okay if you know this um, uh, it has all single bonds okay uh, like this for example okay. this is a saturated fatty acid chain okay um, and on the other hand, okay, the second type of fatty acid chain, it's unsaturated. Okay. Now, in unsaturated, we have, and uh, here in unsaturated, um, we have one or more double bonds between carbons. So, that means that uh, these carbons are um, sp2 hybridized, okay, not all, okay, not necessarily all, okay. I will come to that the amount okay now the difference okay now since we have all the carbons that are sp3 hybridized or have all four single bonds okay and that means more carbon hydrogen bonds right and more carbon hydrogen bonds mean definitely means that we have a higher hydrogen density okay uh, and thus we have a more compact nature they are very close together an example of this is like animal fats okay on the other hand since we have less carbon hydrogen single bonds okay we have double bonds with the carbon like this okay now this reduces the hydrogen density okay so we have a less compact nature okay that means they are not not very close together not very uh, closely packed together okay so um, we have the examples for these such as plant fats okay and oils okay now let's talk about the displaying of these things like in the model presentation now in a model presentation uh, a double bond okay is shown as a kink in the chain okay so since in saturated we don't have in the saturated since we have all single bonds then we don't need a kink let's say yeah? so we don't have a kink in saturated but in unsaturated as we talked um, we have carbon carbon double bond so whenever we have a carbon carbon double bond we display this using um, using a kink okay like this okay 
now um, let's move on um, now unsaturated fatty acids uh, also have further two types okay now we're talking about only unsaturated okay we are done with the saturated now it's mono unsaturated and as the name suggests we have one double bond only in this we have polyunsaturated and as the name suggests we have more than one double bonds okay so as a result um one double bond it's having only one double bond so it's reducing the hydrogen density lesser okay so that means it will be more compact and hence it will be more more viscous okay um however on the other side if we look on the polysac poly unsaturated um we have more carbon carbon double bonds okay so that means um we have a greater reduction of hydrogen density and so it's it's less viscous okay so it's less compact let's closely pack together okay um now let's look at the functions of triglyceride okay we have a, quite a few important functions the first function and it's very important and they act as main storage compound in all the animals okay as their oxidation okay you can also call it combustion okay it releases a relatively higher amount of energy okay by um because we have the fatty acids right and the fatty acids uh, they are they have very long hydrocarbon chains okay and they have many carbon hydrogen bonds okay so this means that they have a higher hydrogen density than than other compounds other storage compounds and hence um, their combustion or oxidation um releases more energy okay but there's a drawback and the drawback is that it also consumes more oxygen okay however it releases more energy so that's an advantage and this is a disadvantage okay now the second second most important function that they're used as an insulating material okay like like the fats in adipose tissue beneath the skin okay uh, and the function the main the main reason of using them is to prevent heat loss okay pretty straight forward um the third the third function for the triglycerides is they provide protection to some vital organs in the body for example liver for example kidneys okay and etc the fourth function is that they are used as solvents for fat soluble white substances okay they are, they are substances that are fat soluble for example fat soluble vitamins okay for example vitamin a and vitamin d etc um they are also used as a source of metabolic water okay um in many desert animals okay where there is a shortage of water okay so desert animals use fats as a source of metabolic water okay um and examples include camels okay and carrier rats etc etc okay um and so that's it for lipids for small section of biological molecules okay see you later